Hi, my name is Simon Snelder. I have a special guest for you on this podcast. His name is Miro Fuck. He is the founder of Vita Virtuos. Miro, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Uh, it's been a while, I know. You've been asking me to, to come on this, so I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here, and uh, I want to know a little bit more about yourself. Like, what, what has your journey been? Where did you start it? Where are you right now? Um, yeah, so I guess I'll start off just telling a little bit about myself and how I got here. Um, so my journey really started, I'll, I'll start with my, we'll say my professional career with insurance particularly. Um, in 2008, when yeah. everything sort of went down in the dumps, I was working for a, uh, uh, an, a financial advisory in California at Wells Fargo. Well, actually it was previously, previously called AG Edwards, and then we got by, bought by Wachovia, and then we got bought by Wells Fargo, all in about a span of about six months. Wow. Um, yeah, and that's when I thought I wanted to be uh, a financial advisor and um, do retirement planning, and it was a scary time. Like, you know, I was 20, 26, 27 at the time, you know, 26 at the time, and uh, yeah, it just sort of, everything hit the, the, the tank, and um, and then I decided to move to China because China was seemed to be the only place that was doing well. So I yeah. uh, moved to China and I uh, landed a job at an insurance brokerage where um, I had a bit of a different approach where I, uh, I was really hard on the phone calls and um, was calling people and doing sales. And um, the company sort of recognized that I was doing an okay job at uh, selling to people in Dubai. So... Um, they sent me on a four-month project uh, to go to the UAE. Um, I loved it so much and we were doing so well. They're like, hey, listen, you want to just stay out here? Mm -hmm. um, moved out to Dubai in 2010. Uh, and then in 2010, uh, 2011, um, decided to, oh, sorry, two years after that, uh, 2012, 2013, decided to, uh, break off and start doing my own brokering. So um, from 2012 to to pretty much you know the last year and a half ago, a year and a half ago, I was uh, doing brokering um, with my wife, um, mm -hmm. and then yeah, sort of uh, sort of got me to where I am today, which is uh, selling insurance technology. Um, I don't know if you want me to talk about that now. Absolutely. I can. Absolutely. Um, I mean, it's. A I mean, being an entrepreneur and, and growing to that journey is definitely that we something we're going to okay. talk about. <laughs> I can't. Well, I can talk about it now if you yeah, want. Go ahead. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so when we when when I got my first insurance job, I the the company we we were work, I was working for, um, they had a very interesting way of uh, addressing their cu customers. They were focusing on digital marketing. Um, which got them a huge volume of customers. And then they were able to um, help customers really quickly by mm -hmm. being on the phones, um, answering emails really quickly. And then also one of the unique things was they were able to send quotations fairly quickly. At that time, they were still doing it in a very manual process, which was uh, they had an Excel spreadsheet, which was like um, specially designed. They had someone designing their Excel tools uh, very well, um, but they were still able to distribute pretty quickly compared to most other people where they didn't even have that. Um, so uh, when I branched off and decided to do my own thing, I knew that I needed to have a similar process to that, which was, you know, we focused on digital marketing, uh, trying to get as high volume clients, but we also needed to distribute fast. So we started off doing an Excel spreadsheet, um, but then the market started to change the tools that we were using were becoming a lot more dynamic. Um, there are a lot more information that I needed to take in that an Excel tool could not mm -hmm. um, uh, identify. For instance, like uh, before it was just your date of birth to get a quotation. Now it's like date of birth and gender, marital status, um, uh, sometimes your income, uh, nationality in some cases. So 
an Excel spreadsheet, she cannot identify these things. You have to identify it yourself and then the Excel spreadsheet can do that. So I started thinking, wow, we're not doing this right. Uh, it's, it's taking way too long, it started to be only like 30, 40 minutes and then it started becoming hours of work. So my background, my family, I come from close to Silicon Valley, but not exactly Silicon Valley, from mm -hmm. the North Bay of California. My whole family's in tech. My father uh, ran a, um, uh, a hardware company. My brother works for one of the top uh, insure, uh, well, uh, marketing um, uh, tech companies in the world. Uh, my, my other brother is also in tech. So um, I thought I'd go down that road and mm -hmm. try to design my own software for my company um, to help me sort of adjust towards how complex quoting became. So I started, I hired a developer and we started designing a internal tool to start quoting customers. And we did it. It was a very basic tool, but it worked. Um, I eventually, uh, after a year or two of using it, we, we got invited to a, an insurance uh, sort of event that was in, um, I think it was in Thailand and uh, at this event there was about 500 brokers and this is for one insurer and 500 of these brokers are like hey uh, um, we all have the same problem and they're telling this in, to the insurers they're saying we can't distribute quotes to our customers we need we will rely on you to give us a solution to be able to help our, our potential customers or our customers so they were they were asking the insurance companies to get uh, mm -hmm. like a, a portal or a tool to be able to quote help them quote faster. And here I am, only like four or five staff using a tool that could answer all these guys' uh, questions uh, or give them a, a solution for their problem. And I was like, maybe I should turn this into a product I, I could sell. So that's basically what ended up happening is I, you know, I came back and put in front of a few cl close uh, friends and colleagues of mine um, that I, I trust in the, in the tech space. And they're like, yeah, this is a, this is a good idea. You should f uh, follow that. So uh, we started designing a product that we could potentially sell one day. And then, um, yeah, I sort of uh, met, met up with partners. Um, you know, you've, you've met Richard before and, um, yeah, we decided to finally launch the product in, in the UAE, and that's how we sort of are, are, are here today. That's, that's a great journey, because what I love is that you, you identified a problem, something that you daily were struggling with. Mm -hmm. And I personally know how frustrating it can be to get quotes and to just be able to put that package together while you are, I could be doing something else with my time. Uh, so it's great that you identify that problem and also were able to find a solution. Yeah, absolutely. I think. I mean, I, I think it's it's good because I was in the industry for so long and I identified um, the issues that people were encountering so much. So I yeah. knew that it's like everyone has this frustration. So that was one unique thing. So, but yeah, it's uh, it, it's good that I was able to go through that journey to to get where I am now. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit curious about getting towards the solution because while you sat down to, with the developer to, to design it, you must have had like ups and downs before oh. you were satisfied yourself. Oh man, I'm still not satisfied to be honest. Uh, took a very long time to even get to a basic version, a very basic version. I mean, one, because I don't technically come from mm -hmm. a tech background, right? Like um, I was designing uh, uh, a piece of software and, you know, there's not one way of designing it. So at that time, I thought, you know, it's just, oh, you just, you just design something, right? Mm -hmm. No, it's not that easy. It's, you, you have, there have so many different languages, so many different ways of structuring um, um, your, uh, yeah, it's just very complex, basically. Yeah. Um, even to now, to this point, I'm doing it for years. I'm still learning. But at that time when I was first starting, I had no idea, you know. And then, you know, you finally run into someone with a little bit more experience, and then they're like, "No, no, this is you did it wrong." You're like, "Oh God!" So um, yeah, it took it took a lot of uh, 
trial and error, we'll say. A lot yeah. of money invested into, into you know, developing a, a workable solution. This is why, I'm, you know, when I see um, our, some of our potential customers or customers and they're like, oh, you know, we're designing our own. I'm like, do not do that. Stay yeah. to your core product. Let other people make mistakes before you because it's a lot cheaper for them to just buy a piece of technology that had years and lots of money thrown at it before beforehand instead of them spending all, all their time and money into developing something that eventually won't have a, a good a solution for them. Yeah, um, no, so. I, I, I fully agree with that. And also, you're diverting away your attention from your core business yes. and your core strength. Yes. And also, I think a lot of companies don't realize, or when they find that later, is that maybe you come up with something, but the market is changing all the time. That means that you need to keep enhancing it to keep it up to date, to keep it workable. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like, uh, it's, it's just like, I read so many books and just business one-on-one don't take away from your core business, mainly yeah. because you'll be taking away the one reason why your customers select, select you. It's because you're good at what you're doing right there. Right now, if you divert resources and time into other things and other mm -hmm. types of businesses, you're going to just dilute your core business and the reason why people select you. So then your customer is going to be like, Hey, we're not getting the same experience that we did when we first came to you. So we're going to go somewhere else. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just a nat it's natural. You can't just say, Hey, we're going to throw a bunch of money and time at, uh, uh, at a new, um, idea and concept within a business. Something's going to, something will give. And it, uh, unfortunately, for a lot of businesses, it tends to be the, the service that they provide to their customers, and then, then they run, run into another set of problems. So, so yeah, um, this is one thing I have, to, I have to constantly explain to people. Yeah, and, and sometimes you warn people, but they want to go that, through that path anyway, and then they realize what actually you were warning them about. Yes. And then they probably will say, okay, I caught my losses. Yeah. <laughs> You would and find so. a proper solution, or sometimes yeah. that takes a while. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a, yeah. I won't mention it on this on this yeah. uh, uh, the name of the company, but there was one company, um, an insurer that spent about a million dollars in investing into a piece of software that was essentially a CRM, um, and then after. I think a year of development, they ended up canning the project because it just didn't work. And I, I, I was mentioning this to a few colleagues, and you know, if they just spent maybe a quarter of this mm -hmm. with Salesforce, you know, they, they assign you an engineer to, 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 to literally develop whatever needs you want. Like, hey, we want this software to do this. They will design it for you. Yeah. Um, you know, but it took them a million dollars and a year of development for them to learn that lesson, unfortunately. Um, so, but yeah, now they're on Salesforce, <laughs> so, yeah. um, which is keeping up with trends, keeping up with technology and their whole, their whole focus is to provide a software that meets their needs instead of, you know, the, this insurance company having to design it themselves and invest all this time and money into doing it. So and what do you think would be helpful because you're, your, your company is providing fast quotes, accurate quotes, mm -hmm. quick overview of quotes. And then you have the other part as well, where the quote comes to the potential customer or to the client. Mm -hmm. How do you see the, the personal interface of an advisor in that process? Well, um, I mean, my background comes from advising. I, I highly... Um, I mean, it's a it's a dear part of my my yeah. life, the advisory side, because there's so much to a, a customer's, um, we'll say, own personal journey that goes into getting the right product, right? Like it, when when a when I was a broker, uh, when a customer comes to me and they say, "Hey, this is my um, this is what's going on with my life. This is what I want to do. This is my, what my fears are," then the advisor comes back and provides. A, a solution, right? Mm -hmm. um, that fits them. Uh, f for me, I want to enable advisors to become more powerful because right now the trend is replace the advisor, right? Like they want all these, there's a lot of e-commerce platforms that are out there um, that are good solutions 
for certain products and certain sectors of insurance or even other um, sectors that have to be insurance that are good to replace an advisor because there's a lot more trust and clarity to things, but the advisor still is so important. So um, for me, I feel that um, we're just gonna continue empowering advisors to give them more tools and a better ability to uh, provide solutions to their, their customers. Um, we're coming up with more, uh, more advanced uh, products uh, right now, we're just doing quoting, like you, like you said, but uh, we're planning on designing an interface that allows advisors to connect better, provide more information to their to their customers, um, have faster change cha changes to uh, the, maybe the quotations that they're uh, being provided from that advisor. So um, we're coming out with some slick ideas mm -hmm. and uh, new concepts that haven't been uh, provided yet. Uh, to the market, and we think it could be a, a game changer for the advisor, particularly. Uh, I, I fully agree with that. That it's very important to to identify the the pro and benefits of of an advisor and non advisor tools that that are there in, in terms of like the you know the, the the changes you see now with websites and and other platforms where you can directly get a quoting system and you never interface with an advisor, but um, I just had like a gentleman walking into my office a couple of months ago and he said, I have two life insurances. One was sold to, to me by a bank and one by another advisor from another firm. So I sat down with him and I went through it. And I'm like, this is what this product is. This is what that product is. What do you want? Is this is what you wanted? Yeah. And, and this is what you want. He said, I want neither of them. I didn't know how these two were. What should I do? I said, wow, well, it's up to you. But... You know, you're paying way too much here, way too much there. You can get a, for like one fifth of the price, the solution that I think you just described. And it was just like fabergas because we paid like 10 years for that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I think that AI tools and, and you know, non-advisories, I will have a problem to get to that point yet. Yeah. And there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of small nuances, right? Um, that uh technology at the moment cannot identify i'll give you an example well, i mean insurance is a perfect example mainly because i would say 95 percent of the processes are still very manual yeah. human driven yeah so you know when a manager of a company leaves mm -hmm. right you notice that change in that yeah. company it's very people driven it's very yeah. skill driven um so an advisor has their finger to the pulse of that, right? Mm -hmm. So when when uh, the CEO or the COO of a company leaves, it it leaves wakes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, hey, this is a big deal. So when someone comes to you and says, hey, what's the difference between these two companies? You can easily tell them like, oh, well, this company is going through struggles. You may not see it, yeah, but it will take you. Instead of two weeks to process your life insurance, maybe it'll take three months. Yeah. Or um, uh, claims are not being paid on time, mainly because the main claims manager has left, or they have new underwriters, or uh, they're going through a reinsurer change, or a variety of different things that in a you know piece of AI or tech, other tech uh, cannot identify these types of problems again because it's a very human-driven type of process. Um, eventually, again, when it goes from you know being ninety five percent human driven and maybe fifty or less. You'll be able to connect AI to say, "Hey, the service is very good with this. Um, you can trust this product." But right now, we're I think we're very far until the industry completely changes how mm -hmm. manual it is and how human driven it is. I think we're very far from uh, having a, an AI replace the the advisor experience, mainly because you know we, we're able to give them. Um, a better feel of what is actually happening in the industry. Yeah, and also I think what nice is is that a quote can show you, for example, very quickly the features, the benefits, and, and the covers, but then an advisor can also explain you how likely it is <clears throat> that those will be applicable with this company or that company, how fast they can be processed to claim. Will you, will you, are you likely to get your claim actually paid out by XYZ companies? Uh, and, and that is that is like the soft data that, you know, together with the hard data, I think that will be a nice mix. 
Yeah, absolutely. I like that word, soft data. I haven't heard that before. I'm going to use that though. Um, yeah, ab absolutely. This is and this is why what we're doing um, is to in, in, enable and empower advisors to be able to um, be more up to date um, with what the how to technology is today, but also um, keep that that human touch to things. So, so in general, what what are a couple of important things for you in business? Uh, it, um, I mean, f for me, when I first created this company, the biggest thing is just solving um, the, the, the biggest solution, which is we want to solve the digital, the, sorry, the distribution process for private medical insurance. And the biggest part for me for business is continuing that journey. That's the biggest thing. I don't want to be interrupted. This is why we're not dealing with many investors. This is why, why we're not, we're very careful about who we engage with as far as people that want to be involved in our journey is because our main objective and as a business is to solve that, that problem, which is, mm -hmm. you know, we have a, a distribution model, which goes from a uh, quoting uh, application to um, underwriting and then payment. That whole process needs to be resolved because at the moment it takes around six to eight weeks to go through that whole journey and we want to simplify that into you know under 30 minutes right post advice so as soon as someone's uh happy with their insurance mm -hmm. the the policy they want to purchase we want to take a eight week process and simplify it down to under under 30 minutes uh, that's 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 a great great outcome to to focus on and the time is so important for everybody right you you feel like in private life and work life yeah i mean it's it, i think also going back to the advisor it's important too because people even though you give them good advice life happens in the end right you you get advice for an insurance policy life health whatever um but all of a sudden you get a bill for your uh your kid's school mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you're you know, uh, maybe that policy that I really wanted doesn't seem as a good idea as, as it sounded, you know, yesterday. Yeah. So like capturing those people in those moments when they really need the insurance and they know they need the insurance. But then again, I always say just life happens, right? You know, yeah. um, something devastating may happen in their, in their family life where they have to have more cash available and they don't want to spend the money on, on that insurance policy or, or whatnot. Um, so being able to get them to decide quickly and you know find a plan and roll and uh, take a policy fast is better because then you know when when things do happen they'll have that insurance policy to maybe protect them too. Uh, yeah, absolutely, and I, I can give you a real life example. I have a client of mine, and she wanted to take a medical insurance for her mom that was visiting, and they end up staying longer because of COVID. In the end, she did not do it because the process was a little bit too complicated. So she took a travel insurance, her mom got sick here, and she ended up paying a lot of money out of her own pocket. And now she, going back, she's like, I, I wish I just quickly could have gotten yep. an overview, select something, do it, not the hassle, while you know I'm busy with my work, my private life, and then doing this on top of that. I'll, I'll give you an example, a personal example that it happened to me years ago. Um, you know, I, I was advising a, a customer that, uh, um, we wanted a medical insurance policy for his family, but he's like, you know what? Um, let's put this on hold. I'm going traveling for mm -hmm. a little bit. When I get back, I'll finish the process. You already decided this is what he wanted, but he just didn't want to complete the application mm -hmm. because it, the application process, I mean, to complete everything by hand, and at that point, everything was by hand. It was, yeah. wasn't these, you know, um, Adobe or DocuSign around. It was mm -hmm. still printing it out. Uh, and it still happens today, unfortunately where people have to print it out, sign it, oh, that's um, go through the pages. Yeah. And it's simple information. It's not complex information. Yeah. But this takes, you know, 30 minutes, an hour of your day, right? Sitting down and going to do it. And I'm not talking, you know, if you were to do it straight, it would take maybe 30 minutes or, or, or an hour. But life gets in the way. And in the end, it takes a few days to do because, oh, you do page mm -hmm. one and two. Mm -hmm. And then you got to take your kids to school and then do three and four. And then you got to go to work and five and six. OK, you got to do dinner. So by that time, it takes a, can take weeks. So he's like, yeah. you know what? I'll do it when I get back. I'm going yeah. on vacation. Yeah. Right. Go to oh, they're going on a wedding. Wife's dancing on the dance floor. 
and she tears her ACL, PCL, because she fell down um, uh, dancing. Gets back, all of a sudden she can't take the insurance. If they would have, it would have been a simple, simpler process. They would have had the insurance. They would have been covered for this terrible accident uh, and not have to pay higher premiums for the insurance now because they apply have to apply after she had an injury. Yeah. So it would have saved them thousands of dollars just because they weren't able to sign up fast enough. Right? Yeah. They still wanted to take it. So yeah, it, you know these are the problems. And it, again, you know I, I give one example, but yeah, this happens every day. Right? So. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a, it's it's an extra blockade for people. So, so this person wanted to do it. It was just like the hassle that stopped it from moving it fast forward. Yeah. And in general, for you in business, like who do you look up to? What are what are your? How do you learn? How do you get food? Yeah. Well, um, I mean, I have so many mentors uh, in my life. Either. Yeah, mentors in books you mm -hmm. know i have i i've i've not met a lot of my mentors but, but i get their lessons through books mm -hmm. uh and i have a lot of mentors that i i speak to on a regular basis mm -hmm. um i think my first mentor uh i haven't been engaging with him um much these days because our lives have uh, gone two different directions and I, uh, I met him when i was a lot younger but my, i have an uncle in hong kong uh, uncle jerry uh, this was the first time I ever met uh, an entrepreneur that was doing what he loved. And mm -hmm. uh, um, just the way he would engage in business, the way he lived his life, I, um, you know, in Hong Kong particularly, I just, I looked up to him and said, you know, this is how I want to live my life. You know, um, this is how I want to do business. So yeah. um, that was the beginning of my journey, just seeing how uh, a person outside of America could live. Uh, I'm sure many people like this in America could uh, live like my uncle Jerry, but not not in my circle, mm -hmm. not where I was living. Um, maybe you'd find this in parts of LA or New York or something like this, but uh, it was wild to me. So then I, my my first uh, person I looked up to was uh, Tim Ferriss, uh, the uh, author of the Four Hour Work Week. Started just mm -hmm. consuming that book, uh, read it maybe two or three times. Um, and then sort of just put me on the journey of being an, an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. um, traveling the world, taking advantage of, of, uh, of currency and labor and um, trying to build a business uh, on a very uh, uh, efficient and effective way. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, moving to Dubai, you meet so many creative minds and amazing minds. So I have a, a variety of different um, and mentors that I, I still tap in today. Um, a uh, couple of our business partners of, of mine now um, have a, a a good friend of mine. Uh, we went to university together. He's he's a business partner in, in our in our uh, in Vita Virtues, and yeah, he's one of my closest mentors because he's gone through the journey already. So like anyone that's gone through the journey that I wanna that I'm going down right now and I want to you know clean exit. These are the best people to pay attention to, and he's got so many stories and so many analogies to give. Um, these are the people I sort of surround myself with these days as uh, people that have already gone through that, that sort of journey before. Do you, do you seek them out on purpose or do you bump into people like that or do they come to you? I, I mean, I definitely seek them out on purpose, um, mainly because like, yeah, if you sit back, I mean, you have to, you have, I guess I'm an energy person. You have to put it out there to, yeah. to receive. Yeah. So, like, I definitely I put put out my energy that I'm looking for guidance. Mm -hmm. So, like, Andrew is a business partner of mine. Mm -hmm. He's not someone I was looking to bring in as a business partner, but I definitely needed his advice. So, I reached out to him because he's a good friend of mine. I said, hey, man, I have this idea. I'm running this business. Um, what do you think? And he, as a friend, returned that information. Mm -hmm. And just through exchange, we just began a business uh, relationship together, mm -hmm. uh, which just turned into a mentorship over time and then a partnership over time. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think I do ask for it, not directly necessarily, but I definitely put that energy out there that, you know, this is what I, I want. And 
energy, yeah. that, that the universe sort of returned that. Yeah, you, you, you're accessible, you're open to learn. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's also a little bit like humbleness that, you know, you put your ego aside. Dude, I am, I try not to, yeah. try not to have too much ego. Obviously, there's always moments, but definitely knowing that you're not the, the smartest person all yeah. the time is a good thing, in my opinion. I feel like if you have this mentality that you're the smallest person, I don't think you will learn. Yeah, right? true. I, I heard somebody say once, well, if, if, if you're the smartest guy in the room, get out of the room. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're definitely in the wrong room in that, in that case. Uh, I agree with that statement. Um, I am constantly around people that I learn yeah. uh, that correct me on a regular basis. So I think that's a, a, a good thing for me particularly. No, I, I'm, I'm definitely a, a, a big uh, advocate of uh, mentorship and um, and also like digesting information. It's, it's very satisfactory for your own journey, but it can be also so helpful in business, right? Because they can just grab that moment where you are maybe struggling and out of the experience and knowledge can like show you suddenly a different curveball and then yep. you're like the light bulb moment. Yeah. And how long would have that taken you on your own? Yep, a hundred percent. They shorten they shorten paths for me. Also I think the other thing too is like being an entrepreneur, particularly having mentors is is so important mainly because only other entrepreneurs that have gone down that journey yep. or are in that journey will understand what you're going through. Yep. Like truly. Like it's not an easy road, mm -hmm. path. Mm -hmm. And we, and I, I say this on a regular basis. If it was easy, mm. then everyone would be doing it. But you know, there are are hard times. There's great times, but there's a lot of hard times in running your own business. Yeah. And having a mentor that's already done it before, they know what you're going through, so they're able to, you know, set your mind straight. They're able to keep you on a, a, a on keep you on the path that you're wanting to go down. Because yeah. sometimes you just you're thinking all sorts of different things or you're on a down or whatever and they're like, hey, stay focused, don't worry, keep pushing, you're doing the right thing. And um, yeah, it's, you know, they, it's so helpful in the end to have, again, particularly mentors that have, have done it before. How important is focus for you? <laughs> As like, probably the most important thing, like being focused on um, on the concept, being focused on your business, being focused, not even just business, but just when, when you're running multiple things, right? Um, you, you, you only have so many things you can focus on. Mm -hmm. And if you're, uh, if you're not focused on those few things, you just, your life will just be chaotic in my opinion. Yeah. So for me, it's basically I focus on three things, right? Business, my personal self, which is like, um, you know, uh, my physical practice yeah. and my mental practice and then my family. Those are like the, the three things I focus yep. on. I unfortunately had so many other things that I were focusing on before starting another business. And, um, it's just too, you, you only have so much time in a day. So being focused on your, your core, um, areas is important because, um, I think, I think you just take away from, the most important things in your life, which for me again are my business, myself, and my family. What is helping you to bring your focus to the right places? Um, so again, I, the going back to mentors, that's one helpful thing for business. Is um, you know, there's a lot of things that can take you out of focus for your business. It could be on product or mm -hmm. um, your business model, whatever it may be. Your mentors are like, hey, stay focused. This is what you're. That this is what we're planning on doing, and let's accomplish that. For myself, um, I uh, I now have a routine of um, mental and physical improvement. So, like for instance, I do yoga at least twice a week. Mm -hmm. um, this is I'm not very good at meditating. I try to improve on this, but uh, there's a form of meditation mm -hmm. in yoga. Mm -hmm. So it's like a two for one. You know, it's a good physical practice, but also mm -hmm. a great mental practice. Yeah. Um, I surf, so like mm -hmm. surfing is just like a deep passion for me. Yeah. Um, it's something I hope to be able to do until I, I die. Um, uh, and that is again, a good physical and mental practice. There's no, it, there's probably elements of meditation in there, but not like yoga particularly where they like help you uh, guide you in, in meditation. But, um, that's another uh, aspect of my sort of physical and mental. And then I just recently started doing, um, 
cold plunge in, in sauna, this is like a huge mm. physical and mental practice for me as well. Like that cold plunge, wa cold water sort of like sort of sucks in everything and you have nothing else to focus on but your breath yeah. and because your, your, your body's so much in shock, right? So I think these uh, sort of activities help me with my physical and mental practice. And in my family, what helps me with focus for that is um, I've read a lot of books mm. that have helped me get particular routines in my life that will allow me to always focus on my on my family so um, there's not one book I can give you as a reference you know there's maybe three or four that I've read that got me to where today but I'll tell you my routine so every morning I wake up I have a reminder uh, uh, at uh, around 7 30 uh, I get my first reminders which is uh, gratitude so I, mm -hmm. I remember uh, to always be grateful for my my life and my family Mm -hmm. So I sort of take a 15 second moment where I just think about my family and mm -hmm. my, you know, mm -hmm. the, yeah. the life that I have and be, be very grateful for that. And I tell, it doesn't matter. Sometimes it just sort of becomes routine, but yeah, I try to always tell mm -hmm. myself I'm very grateful for my life and for my mm -hmm. family. Um, and then the next one is next reminder I get is uh, kiss your family and level up. So mm -hmm. kiss my family is so I, I give a kiss to my wife. I give a mm -hmm. kiss to my son. And this is before I look on Instagram, mm -hmm. or well, I don't use Instagram anymore, but like LinkedIn yeah, or any yeah. kind of social media. Uh, I was a, as a bad practice before having all these routines, like going on my social media first thing in the morning. No, mm -hmm. I cut this out. This is one of the things I didn't have time for anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and just focusing on just, hey, I'm gonna give my, my wife a kiss, I'm gonna give my son a kiss, and you know, focus on that. Um, so that's one part of my routine, and then uh, another one is uh, every two weeks I have uh, I write a letter to my son um, mm -hmm. to just recap what our life is at at that moment and mm -hmm. just giving my my two cents. So I have a lot of these sort of family reminders mm -hmm. um, to uh, invest in my family, to focus on my family, which is yeah. like again very important to me. But life can get crazy, right? Yeah. Like if you don't have these reminders or someone telling you, you can just blink of an eye a month has gone by and you know what have you done with that month have yeah. you spent uh, time with your family have you spent time with your business no maybe you're messing around you know going out on the weekends drinking mm. or you're uh, uh, just yeah just wasting time doing doing something that doesn't bring you value so um, I have these constant reminders telling me focus on what's important to you so yeah that's, that's very nice uh, I like a, a lot of those things that you try to to enhance in your life to to make you aware of what you have mm -hmm. right to, like you said be grateful right don't don't only think about what you don't have yeah but look what you're waking up to Absolutely. look the life the people you are with your family and where you are where you come from Absolutely. To, to have this i uh, i agree cuz uh you know, a lot of people, you look at someone else, I mean, Dubai, it's really easy, right? You can mm -hmm. look at someone else driving in your yacht, yacht you automatically feel like you're a poor person. Yeah. Um, but if you look at the guy that, you know, just was the labor worker that has been building the buildings around here, us today, Yeah. you know, you, you can be, you're, you're uh, the richest person in the world can, when that person looks at you. So it's all, all relative, right? So exactly. Um, so just be grateful for what, you know, being healthy, being having a family if you have one, mm -hmm. for whatever it may be, but uh, making sure that you're grateful for it. Yeah, and uh, I like the connecting part as well, that you want to find moments to, to also connect with, with each of those components. Yeah. Like within your family, with each member, within your business, to, to know that you're, you're, you're there as well. And, and also it's important to have your own time as well, to connect with yourself as 100%. well. A hundred percent. I think it's so important. Before I actually, I wasn't focusing on that for a yeah. period of my life. And, you know, if that breaks down, everything breaks down. Yeah. So you have to be a little bit selfish. Yeah. You have to be. Like, it, it's tough at times, especially when you have, like, so many things going on and it's, yeah. you know, you have family and friends and stuff like that. But you need to take moments to be a little bit selfish because if you're not and your body breaks down and your mind breaks down, everything else will, will yeah. fall. So before I switch away from focus, I just want to say or ask you, how important is it to say no in order to say yes? 
Oh man, saying no is, is so important. I love saying yes because I'm such a yes yeah, person. That's me like too. like that's I grew up like everyone loving me, like, yeah, you're always you're always down for everything, yeah. man. You're like you say yes to everything. Now it's just like, yeah, just making a practice of saying no, it's it's super important. I you know, it's tough to do. Yeah. Um I guess if you're someone like myself that likes to be liked all the time and mm -hmm, likes to be mm -hmm. uh doing things that are I, I get crazy FOMO yeah. on a regular basis. Um, but uh, being able to say no is, uh, is I think, really important for you to uh, stay focused to your objectives is because you cannot do everything, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so It takes away, right? It takes away from so much things that... And then when you do say yes... And when you do say yes, those yeses are way more meaningful. Exactly. Significantly more. Yeah. So... Um, unfortunately, it's uh, you have all these pressures around you that you want to constantly say yes yeah. to, but it takes away from some greater rewards in there in, in the future that you say yes to. Like, yes, I want to buy that dream house, or yeah. yes, I want to buy that dream car, um, or whatever it may be. So, yeah, that's that's a that's a great uh, question. I like that. Yeah, thank you. I, I want to talk a little bit about like using surfing technology. Surfing technology. Okay. Yeah, I mean, surfing. you got my, you got my, you got my uh, attention already. Yeah. So, so what have what what have been some of the best waves you caught in business, and what have been some of the like you know moments where you really felt you were drowning? Oh, whoa, geez. Uh, um, I mean, I, I I feel like it's not like you're I'm drowning, but the best way to compare my journey right now is like um like uh rocky waters right like mm -hmm. it's it's a constant movement it's constant adjustments to things um so like when you're starting off a, a, a business that you just constantly feel like the waters are not calm right there's always something unexpected coming up yeah. um and so like there's not like one particular moment that i felt like i was drowning but i just I, it, there is a constant feeling of unease because you know the waters are not calm mm. right but occasionally you'll get that nice ride mm. you know that small wind that comes across that you're like wow you know validates that waning in that rocky waters you know why am i out you know it, it happens mm. all the time in surfing you're like you know you'll be out in the water and you're like god why am i out here it's not worth it it's so yeah. stupid and then you just right about the moment when you feel like you're about to give up and go back in, a wave will come through and you're like, oh, and sort of just validates all that time you just put, just put in waiting for that wave. And then you're like, you know what? I'll stay out for a few more. And you go back out again. So, um, you know, surfing in business, honestly, like I, rem I, I remember when I first started off my uh, financial advising career in, uh, in San Diego, I, again, I was just a junior advisor. I wasn't doing actual advising. I was just making cold calls. But yeah. I would pay attention to all these, um, uh, the senior advisors, and all of them are surfers. And all of them are super successful. And I still to this day believe that like surfers can be great business um, businessmen, mainly because of the mentality that they have. Mm -hmm. Like um, they're really good at committing to something. Right, like in surfing particularly, you have to commit. If you're halfway, like especially in big wave surfing, like if you commit halfway, you can really endanger yourself. Yeah, when you but when you commit, you commit. You go, you yeah. go, you go for it. And uh, there's good analogies like you know, uh, waiting for waiting for waves and and other things like that. Um, but yeah, I think particularly the the mentality of surfers that they are able to commit to things that are scary and dangerous, but they they know there's a massive reward in it. I think that's, if you take that into life and business, uh, it has a, a lot of uh, translation into things. So, um, yeah. yeah. It's a, I like that because it does often a little bit of a stigma, right, about service. Like, oh, you know, they're too relaxed, you know, they're li living this laid back life. But if, if you look at it, and the discipline you they're showing, and the commitment, the focus, uh, and and just balancing in this element, which yeah. is the sea, which is so hard to and unpredictable. I know this uh, this guy that uh, was a friend of mine, and 
for three straight years I went to the Zoras and no matter what time it would be, three o'clock, four o'clock, two o'clock, at like around 5 a.m., he would be in the water. at the sea, at the water. Oh yeah, I was. I did it this, I did this, uh, uh, this last weekend, like wake up at 4 a.m. Yeah. before the sun rises, make your coffee, drive out to the beach, get to the beach before the sun is even up. Um, and then, yeah, and then just sort of dedicate yourself to your craft. Um, it's, uh, it is a big commitment, man. So yeah. yeah, I think, I think, yeah, a lot of surfers have this stigma of, oh yeah, they're like super laid back. There's a, definitely a switch, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. they, I think, and I think it's because of this, you know, um, calmness and this like craziness at the yeah. same time, right? They know how to switch it on when it's calm, they're calm. When it's crazy, they're like hyper focus you're not focusing on anything else except that way so there's uh again like a lot of translation to to, to life and business yeah it's, you, you can you can learn from everything and enjoy everything as well and i like you know that you that you're using you know the calm the waters part in business because yeah you you just never know right what absolutely is coming. and and so when it, when it comes to your current situation like what are, what are you feeling is next and, and what is your ultimate dream? What is your, your end station? So what's next for us in, in the immediate ter term, um, I mean, we've had a lot of success in the UAE, particularly yeah. for our first product that we launched. Um, we've been listening to our customers uh, on a regular basis mm -hmm. as far as what they're wanting next. So we're we're planning on launching some more tools and products for our customer base in the UAE. Um, this should probably hold us, um, uh, keep our focus on this probably for the next year or, or two. Um, but eventually what we want to do is uh, launch it into global markets. Uh, uh, markets that are probably similar to how Dubai is. So uh, markets like Singapore, mm -hmm. um, Hong Kong, uh, Thailand, um, we have other markets that are again similar, but a lot larger. We'll say like in uh, Latin America, particularly, mm -hmm. and even Europe. Um, so yeah, it's it's taking into the to next markets probably in the next like two two three years, um, and then eventually who knows where we go next. Um, the plan is to go global, mm -hmm. um, but but uh, I'm trying to stay humble, trying to trying to focus on you know one step at a time yeah. and not looking too far ahead. Um, but yeah, that's that, that's the initial plan right now. That's good. And, and and do you feel those markets are similar to Dubai because of the expat population or or are they I do. Different? I think particularly for the products that are um, being sold and our technology, what the the solution that's solving, um, all revolves around like the expat market. Mm -hmm. So anything that's a high expat market. Um, uh, at the moment, our 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 solution solves uh, solves those problems in those other markets. Um, but who knows? Things may change. There's uh, new concepts as well, new markets that are opening up to us that we can pivot. But again, you know, we're in initial stages. We're not in a stage of pivoting at the moment. We don't want to get off of our our journey and our focus at the moment. But you know, two three years down the line. When when we're a bigger company and we can maybe throw money at other projects, we may go down, uh, you know, into other markets that are not similar to Dubai, like maybe Saudi Arabia or something like that. Um, so, but yeah, at the moment, I think everything's focused on expats at the, at, the, at this time. Yeah, well, thankfully there's still a lot of expats yes. uh, places out there in the world. Yes, and and then there's no chance I see that disappearing. No, I think it'll probably increase. Yeah, over time. Because, you know, being an American, I think a lot more people are looking outside than inside these days, especially in my circle of friends. So um, I do think it'll be always, being an expat will always uh, be intriguing to people. And are you planning to, as an expat yourself, are you, are you planning to stay longer in, in, in Dubai or? I mean, we're, I'm open to, to anything, mm -hmm. um, you know, as long as it doesn't interrupt my family. Um, yeah. If uh, my journey takes me back to the U.S., then so be it. Um, like I said, we do have bigger markets in, uh, we'll say, no uh, North and South America, the Americas. Um, I don't think it'll have to take me there, but if it needs to, then, um, then so be it.
Yeah, one step at a time. But I'm very, exactly. very curious to see the journey for that. We had also your business partner, Vishat, here, and it, uh, it was also very interesting to see his, see his journey and your journey and some, there's some commonalities there. With, For example, both of you have been in, in China, worked in China yeah. before you came to Dubai. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's just fantastic to, to uh, be able to, to have worked in other places as well outside of your home country. Absolutely. It's brought a lot of experience to my life. I mean, I'm sure the same with you, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, it, it, when you compare your friends that have, have mm -hmm. not traveled and lived outside the country to, to yourself, it's mm -hmm. I can only describe how I am today um, because of because of the experience I've, I've gotten outside of, you know, where I'm used to, where, I'm, where I, I grew up in. You know, I yeah. wouldn't have been, I am not the person I am today mainly because I lived in China and I lived in Dubai. Yeah. And uh, you know, I've been to other places in the world where you can open up your mind to different perspectives. Exactly. And, and it helps you also in business, right? Your, your end customer is an, is an expert and you want, you can identify also better than. Yeah, with absolutely. The, with the end customer. So for, for our viewers, in case we have not asked you anything yet that you wanted to touch base on, what do you think is something that you would like to share with them that, um, that I have not asked you or maybe that is on your mind? It's, it's a free, free platform, so wow. go ahead. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like, uh, I, I think there's one thing I just... I, I, you know, everyone says I'm, I'm the biggest salesperson, but mm -hmm. I only sell things I feel like will improve other people. But we sort of touched basis on it. But I think the most important thing more than anything is, uh, again, focusing a little bit on yourself and taking the time to improve yourself, like really improving yourself. This is, could be either um, picking up a self-improvement book that will teach you new lessons in life, um, surrounding yourself by people that... Um, that you want to aspire to, and you know, learning their practices. But uh, I think I think a lot of people st stop um, after school trying to improve themselves. Like when you go in school, like they force you to improve your education mm -hmm. and your, your mentality. But once you get out of school, you a lot of people already assume like I've learned everything I need to learn, mm. right? I'd say the majority of people are like this. But having a self improvement practice is super important and mm -hmm. I think it's uh, often lost by people um, so like uh, yeah listening to podcasts or um, picking up a new a new uh, activity right mm -hmm. uh, and learning learning something new I think is is very important for people so um, if there's one lesson I would say uh, mm -hmm. is that just don't stop improving yourself like uh, if you don't want to have time to read, pick up a podcast. I, I forgot where I heard this from or read this from is in your car, you should, your car is a moving a school. You spend, uh, I think they said, if you got all the time uh, that you spent in a car over two years, that's the equivalent of, I think, uh, over, sorry, one year is the equivalent of two diplomas uh, of education. So if you just every single time you're in a car, you put on an audiobook and learn about something, mm -hmm. that's the equivalent of two diplomas. Um, so, so yeah, constantly improve yourself, constantly work on yourself. Um, that's pretty much it. Absolutely, and also be grateful. Oh yeah, always be grateful because you know that's definitely something that I found also coming out of your story, and 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 I thank, definitely think you can be grateful about a lot. In your life, and, and that's great to, to see that. And it was great to have you here, Miro. Uh, you know, you're the founder of Vita Virtual as a company. You're at the same time also focusing on uh, another component in your life. And it was great for me to hear your story and for the people listening to uh, hopefully also enjoy a uh, podcast together. Oh, so thank you very thank much. Thank you for coming. Oh, and thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And uh, I, I hope when we have our, our next interview, I have even more stories to share of, of our journey and more of my learnings i'm happy to share it with you as well so, absolutely thank you well, thank you